Now available on Instagram. First thing I want to say is to our audience that has been watching, thank you so much for watching. 40% of you are not subscribed, but you're still watching and you're watching a hefty amount of this crap. Just subscribe. If you're getting this crap, you might as well subscribe to this crap. Buckle up. We're going to talk fashion stuff. So let's do it. Okay, first up. The Tiffany Basquiat advent calendar that just came out. We're closely following Tiffany's every move. Because there are so many things that are happening. LVMH just bought Tiffany and Company in January of this year, I believe. So since then, they've been doing a lot of things to try to revive the company slash give it a more youthful feel. So the annual advent calendar, it's a four foot white oak cabinet filled with 24 blue boxes filled with jewelry and objects. The price is unknown. It's one of those price upon requests, but the 2019 calendar was $112,000. They didn't do one for 2020 because the pandemic. Let me crunch the numbers on, would be 4,666 per piece. Dot six, six. This is a devil's number. Four, six, 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 six. <laughs> okay. So wow. excited. Wow. Wow. So, okay, um, so it's, beautiful. it's cute. It's beautiful. I mean, it's beautifully made and all the little boxes are so adorable, but I don't know. We're Where's the Basquiat in it though? Okay. On the outside okay. of it. Miniaturized version of the painting printed on the cabinet, I'm guessing. Yeah. I mean, it's very cool it's also. It's embarrassing too. It's kind of cringe. It's kind of cringe, but it's kind of like cool too. But it's kind of cringe. Depending cringe on who cool. gets it. Is this cringe or cool? Let us know. Can I ask you oh, this? Yeah. If you were like dating someone and you went oh, into their house. Oh, this is a house, deal breaker. You don't want to date You don't want to date them? I don't want to see any Basquiat like sneakers. Unless you have like a poster Wait, but real. if I would see anything of Basquiat's, I would want to see a $112,000 Tiffany and Company <laughs> cabinet with like curiosities in it. I'm okay with that. You're kind of cheesy, but I'm also thinking... Let's have a martini. No. I don't know. Uh, Chanel surfboard's cheesy and good. This is not that. I mean, Tiffany's has continued to remain in the headlines lately in the midst of this rebranding. First, they did the Beyonce and Jay-Z All About Love campaign with the Basquiat painting. And then they did the Daniel Arsham collaboration, who's also an artist who has collaborated with Kim Jones at Dior. So there's like street cred there, a more young vibe because his audience now knows him from Dior. Yeah. So it's hype beast audience. And then they did this campaign called Not Your Mother. There's Tiffany. That one backfired. The older customer did not like being... Rude. They thought they were being mocked. Excuse me. Yeah. You don't want my money? Just to single them out and say, not your mother's Tiffany. Wow. Don't bring my mother into it. If Tiffany and company want to consult with us with ready to wear, we would love to help with hey. that. We make ourselves available. See you in Paris. Or NYC. Even LA. Initial meetings on Zoom too. I could do that. If they want to connect with a younger audience, who better? Than us? Really? I don't know if we... Show your TikTok movie. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I follow this TikTok account of TikTok favorites on Instagram. It's just a compilation of the worst of TikTok, aka the best of TikTok, but it's just cringe. There's so much cringe. Don't go on unless you're ready to be funny and cringe. That's the two requirements. I'm ready to be funny, but not cringe. Just being cringe is so cringy. I need to be not embarrassed, I guess, to just be embarrassing. It's just really hard for me, you know. How do we get here? I don't know, but Back to Tiffany. So the newest way that Tiffany is plugging into the younger audience is the new collaboration with Supreme. It's launching on Thursday, November 11th. So actually by the time this airs, it's already launched, which means it'll sell out it's probably gone. by the time we're talking right now. It's already over. It's interesting that they followed Kim Jones collab with Daniel Arsham and then they thought to go to Supreme. Yeah, they're kind of following Kim Jones footsteps. Kim Jones moves are good moves. Those are the moves you want to make collaboration wise. I didn't think they were going to go more hype beast, younger guy route. Out. They were signaling it all with these other, yeah. from the Beyonce, Daniel Arsham, and the Not Your Mothers. It was yeah, like, and Jay -Z. going a different way. Yeah, but I also thought that they were going to go more fashion route, like yeah. Elsa Peretti. They would get me with that. They are not taking the move of like, we're coming out with an aesthetic. No, they're like, take what this is, but we're just going to do collaborations now. Yeah. So Tiffany and Supreme is going to be necklaces made of silver and pearls, bracelets, heart-shaped earrings, and key rings. And they're also going to issue a box logo tee with the Supreme logo in 
in the Tiffany blue. I don't really think I would want something that says return to Supreme. Kind of just You don't want to be returned to Supreme. I want to return to Tiffany. You're not going to feel comfortable there once you're there. I don't want to go there. That's not my demographic. Return to Tiffany. Return uh-huh. to Fifth Avenue. Return to Fifth Avenue, please. This is a win-win for everyone, though, because for Tiffany, it's injecting some much-needed youthful energy, and for Supreme, it's working with another luxury label that's a historic luxury label. It's Clout. Clout. It's Fifth Avenue, baby. It's Breakfast at Tiffany's. It's two New York giants. I can see them as a couple. Older woman. Oh. Younger and man. Younger... I don't see that. But not that couple. young. He's like in his like late 40s. What is she's Upper East Side lady? It's Tiffany and Supreme. And he's in the Lower East Side. Well, what is skate? What is Tiffany? He's like a Supreme skater. As a person. She's I think. like seventy eight, and he's like <laughs> nineteen. Not that bad. I don't think it's she's, your what's mother, that movie? Oh. Mrs. Robinson. No, Mrs. Robinson would be a good one. Yeah, Hoffman. but what's the other one? Harold and Maude. Harold and uh, Maude. Madonna's got a twenty seven year old boyfriend. Let's see Madonna's new boyfriend. Twenty seven year old backup dancer. He's cute. He has swag. This looks like a 90 Day Fiance I'd like to but see. But this is like an iconic coupling, kind of. I love it. I love these outfits. And she's going there with the fashion, yeah. at least. how she's in the Versace Tresor. And he is grazing her He's leg. not grazing. He's, he's going there. He's going there. He's wearing a coach shirt. Oh, is it Bape? Yeah. And Coach? Another collab they we did forgot a collab? to mention. Oh my god. That's crazy. 36 year age difference. Go for it, sis. I love it. She's happy. I love me some Madonna. Madonna cannot do wrong for okay, me. Okay, but she did so, wrong sorry. here on the Photoshop or what? Page six. But leave they our took queen. her neck away too, so it's just cursed. Leave in her. Many ways. She's fine. Don't it say stuff like about she's Madonna. Melting. Let's move on to mohair. And mohair, the yarn that's used to make sweaters, is having a big moment in menswear. It's actually being referred to as bro hair. So mohair is a yarn made from the hair of the Angora goat. It's been around actually since biblical times and mohair gets its name from Moses in the Bible. The Japanese brand Needles introduced vibrantly colored mohair sweaters in 2018. This whole look to me is very bad boy slash good boy. It's like Mr. Rogers cardigan mixed with Kurt Cobain. Kurt Cobain is actually a huge influence in this look. He did wear some cute as hell mohair sweaters back in the day. He loved the good cardigan. Pullovers too. It kind of gives you that disheveled kind of more rocker vibe i feel like more kind of rebel vibe i read that a sweater owned by kurt cobain sold at auction for three hundred and thirty-four thousand dollars. that's crazy what do you do frame that as a piece of art i guess because you're not gonna wear it that's couture yeah from the gap or something <laughs> his is probably thrifted actually 100 percent mohair you're only gonna find it a really nice store so needles was one of the first stores to introduce the sweaters but once marnie men's introduced their versions of the mohair sweaters with beautiful color combinations and stripes those just blew up every rapper every young guy every, every cool person everyone wanted those and they still want them they're still really hot they still are. i do think they give this very kurt cobain vibe artistic i don't care it's relaxed it's, it's a little more worn in it's a little more disheveled less perfect than cashmere mm. like a guy in a cashmere sweater is wall street hello mm. this is more like downtown guy yeah artsy and it's kind of also sarcastic kind of old man dressing trend as well but yeah. it's in mohair so it's cool i do really think that marnie really blew up with that and they seized the day with that sweater they popularized a trend after marnie everyone pretty much followed yeah. we have a Wake, New York, John Elliott, Isabel Morant, The Elder Statesman, Earl, ALD, Supreme. Every brand that does menswear does a mohair sweater now. Yeah. Marnie's use of mohair hit different and it elevated mohair sweater to the next level. Marnie Men's was not a huge marketplace. It opened up Marnie to a whole new demographic and I love that. I love that these young guys are now getting into it because you know what? It's always been cool and it's still cool and you're cool if you think think it's cool cool that's cool is this a trend that's part of quarantine probably goes back to the desire people have for tactile things worn in homemade yeah. almost mm -hmm. and a uh, mohair sweater definitely feels that way it doesn't feel perfect it yeah. feels used already that's what makes it and cool. irregular yeah i think not perfect has been a big theme in fashion nordstrom editorial director said an overall desire for texture and materials that makes you want to touch them in real life rather than just see them on screen yeah, that goes back to the feels like product campaign the sound of the zipper opening and the nails on the 
leather. It's, in, it's just very visceral. Uh, mohair and the Feels Like Prada campaign mm -hmm. have that in common. Okay, let's just do this one very quickly. She wanted to tell you guys this in case you guys didn't know this. Yeah. Vogue Paris is no longer going to be Vogue Paris. It's now going to be Vogue France. That's November. It. it starts in November. Yeah, with the November issue. They've always been like, this is Paris. Yeah. This is not France. That's actually like America having just Vogue New York. I would be offended by that, actually. Excuse me all. You know, it's not Vogue America or Vogue US. It's just Vogue. About it, it's American Vogue. They refer yeah. to it as American mm -hmm. Vogue. Mm -hmm. They don't refer to it as Vogue New York or New York Vogue. So let's move on to the Balenciaga Spring Summer 22 campaign. It was very cool. It was very interesting. I loved it. So the lookbook is more typical lookbook just in a white background, but they're all trimmed out in these crazy robotic accoutrements. Almost like Transformers yeah, or something. Yeah, they have like helmets, giant exoskeleton. Futuristically dystopian robotic faces. They credit his the artist who um, made these pieces. His name is actually Eku Uchi Hiroto, he did this in partnerships with a robotics manufacturer, Skeletonics. Very Balenciaga, very Demna right now. He's been in this futuristic mode. I mean, he cloned the same model like 44 times. He also made Balenciaga into a video game. Very much pushing the brand into the future. I love it. And I love this lookbook. Dystopian and apocalyptic. He creates these realistic high-tech sculptures out of little tiny components pulled from headphones and Bluetooth earpieces a single creation will take him three months to make eight hours a day he says it's like puzzle pieces yeah exoskeleton that he made that's the one that he partnered with the actual robotics company i just really appreciated the tangibility of these images so they'll be on display in tokyo and in the paris flagship stores i wish i was in paris to see them let's move on to charles jeffrey lover boy charles jeffrey is from scotland and he has lived in london since 2008 he has his ma from central st martin's he was nominated for the LVMH Prize in 2016, and John Galliano presented him with the Emerging Talent Award in 2017 at the British Fashion Awards. He's been compared a lot to John Galliano. He's been compared to Alexander McQueen a lot too, mm. because he's from The this... look is very different. Yeah. So the brand Charles Jeffrey Loverboy actually emerged from a club night that he hosted, that Charles Jeffrey hosted, which is called Loverboy. That just became super popular. It was just a fabulous kind of club kids inspired crazy crazy ass. night yeah from that club night emerged the brand charles jeffrey lover boy it's pretty much everywhere now everywhere that i shop at least it's caught my eye and my attention and i'm really into it i love the play on proper scottish attire like the tartan yeah. but then it's very club kid at the same time and it's mm -hmm. very wild and there is a tactical aspect to it too he did the club while he was in school he did his BA and MA degrees there at St. Martin's. The club night proceeds from that he used to pay for school. Yeah. And that funded the line too. The first time I came across the brand was a Dover Street Market 2016. Dover Street Market started carrying the brand. They even had like a pop-up in the New York store. I thought it was cool how he was able to take this club night, turn it into a brand, fuse the whole aesthetic of yeah. that club night into the brand, kind of like how Heatherette did or mm -hmm. how Hood by Air and Ghetto Gothic are related. Yeah, Ghetto Gothic was the evolution into hood by air yeah so the same thing with this and at this point the club night is really the main influence for the line itself mm -hmm. which unfortunately is done because of night. covid uh no i think just he's just busy it ran its yeah, yeah of course that's it, the thing about these like hot clubs though they can't be forever yeah kind of annoyed that it's over it's not like but i had my venue. chance yeah. and i didn't grab it i guess um, i haven't been to london in a while the look is very london diy sarah mower editor of vogue mm -hmm. said that he's the upholder of all that is human creative cheerful about british fashion well i do think that there is also this kind of rebellious Vivian Westwood aspect yeah. to him too. It's forward in a very old school British way. Of... It's also visceral. Yeah. Another word of the day. Yeah, visceral. Drink every time we visceral. Clothes are very wild, mm. all about uniqueness. Yeah. It's about subverting gender codes and gender bending. And it's available at Dover Street Market, Matches, Browns, Essence. We'll put links to all the stores that it's available at. There's... Okay, Scaparelli. And we've been talking about Scaparelli a lot lately because it's just looking so gorgeous and beautiful. And because we like its designer. Yeah, we think he's hot. Daniel Roseberry. Just think of Rose and Berry. Berry, which is so sweet of a name. Mm -hmm. He's so, like, cute. You were saying 
how will this brand expand? It's so limited. Yeah. And I said that I really want to buy some things. I've seen some things, but I've never seen it in person. Mm. So guess what? It's expanding. First, it started off last month. It was announced that it was going to have its own little space and a little nook at Bergdorf's in New York. So that's the first step. And then Scaparelli is going to have pop-ups at Dover Street Market. It's going to have a pop-up at the London store, the Los Angeles store, and the New York store. You're going to whop when you have a brand you love in a store you love. I love Dover Street Market. And buying Scaparelli there? And I love Scaparelli. So buying Scaparelli at Dover Street Market is like, Get a that's bucket fun. and a mop, right? Slowly but surely, Scaparelli is expanding. And it's also becoming very much an it brand with fashion lovers and celebrities. Let's go through some of my favorite looks by celebrities. Starting with Lady Gaga at the inauguration. I mean, this kind of looked like Hunger Games, which I kind of loved. <laughs> also, it's kind of scary that this is our inauguration and there's someone that's looking like Hunger Games. For fashion's sake, I love it. Bottom of the skirt is, it looks like taffeta of some kind and it's super full. And then the top has this gold brooch bird on it. She's I, red, white, and blue. Yeah. She's the American flag. In black. My only thing was I didn't like that this had like the tailored shoulder, blazer shoulder. Really loved the bottom of it. Kim Kardashian at Christmas 2020, she wore this green bodice, like a sculptural bodice piece with the wraparound skirt. The whole, Is it the Hulk? Incredible. Incredible Hulk. This is the Incredible Hulk, a sexy Incredible Hulk costume or something. Yeah, that's exactly what it is, sexy Incredible Hulk. I love it. I think the earrings are my problem. I love really? the ponytail. I love it, David. Not, not with the Not with the bustier. I just, I'm so in love with everything in this look. Oh, you are? I oh, love so it. so you're in love with this. I, I'm in love with this. You're not? No. Bella Hadid at Cannes. This was perfection. Another one. I didn't like it. Really? Actually, this creeped me out. This is perfection. She's letting those things breathe. But I bet you things are taped up there. She went for it. Then we have Cardi B. I mean, Cardi B has been wearing Scaparelli a lot. I believe this is on the streets of Paris. This is incredible. Look at this headpiece. These are sunglasses, I'm guessing. A Chanel tweed jacket, but it's Scaparelli with the crazy buttons and the breastplates that are breasts. And this is fashion. Yeah. It's kind of like a wet gold chrome cloth hit her in the face. Let's do Tilda Swinton because I mean, she's my favorite always. I mean, she's been scaparelli it a few times. Let's go over a few of her looks. One of my favorites is this one at the Suspiria premiere. Hot fuchsia huge balloon pants wow. and the blazer. That's the famous shocking pink and the runway look had the blazer with a different pant. It's team, such a actually. different thing with pink Yeah, pant. that was like an older look. One of your favorites? Yeah. Would of... you rock this one? Totally. I, I mean, would. there's not one you wouldn't rock. I mean, she wears Scaparelli a lot. Actually, let's look at some Tilda Swinton looks because Tilda Swinton to me is a style queen. She's done a lot of Scaparelli. She's done a lot of Chanel. But most of all, she's done a lot of Hyder Ackerman. That's beans on toast. That's two peas in the pod. That's all of whatever you want me to say. I don't know what the sayings are. Peanut butter and jelly. That's what it is. She she recently has been promoting a few different movies. One of them is French Dispatch, which I'm really excited to see. It's uh, a Wes Anderson movie. She's been pulling looks. So let's look at some of her looks from Cannes and premiere stuff. Do you know what I love about Tilda Swinton is that she never bland blends in. No. She always stands out. Glamorous, yet androgynous. She's colorful, yet minimal. Okay, here she is. This is a Scaparelli look. I love this look. Straight from the lookbook. She's wearing the pant and the blouse. Look at the sleeves, David. There's room for a lot of people under there. She also wore Scaparelli again, promoting more things on the red carpet. And here's the original lookbook image. And I like how you is. have it both so we can kind of see who did it better. I think they both did it well because I love that model too and I love Tilda. Their bodies. hair is almost similar. Yeah, it is. Even though the model's hair is actually up. Then, Hyder Ackerman and Tilda. She wore a lot of different looks and she definitely did a lot of Hyder Ackerman color. He plays with color but it's always grown up color. I love his color combinations. I love his color blocking. It's so interesting, mature, grown sophisticated. up. Sophisticated, but yet playful and cool. So here she is in a Hyder Ackerman suit. I love the color. I love the short sleeve. I love the weird closure. Oh, we've seen so many variations. This actually mm -hmm. is cool. This is a cool suit. Timeless thing done with such a cool twist. It reminds me of a Margiela or something. Mm -hmm. Anything, I guess, surreal. Then she's exploring more color. She pops with the red carpet. It looks like an orange and pink dress with a pink bolero. With Tuxedo a, jacket. The short 
short pink tuxedo jacket and then a sequence under body the suit underneath Do you think it that all. it's a bodysuit do you think it's a dress? Or I don't it's know. It's just sleeves either. It's just too. sleeves of the dress. I'm not sure. We don't know what the frick is happening under that tuxedo jacket, but whatever it is, it looks good. I just love the silhouette on her. It's so long. It's, these colors. These colors are very youthful and cool, but they're so sophisticated on her. I think the sequined texture of the sleeves too coming into it that make mm -hmm. the orange and pink that pop. Much. And then I love the red pump. Sure. Do you see the red pump kind of yeah. matches the red carpet? This is such a good look. This looks so good. This looks too good. Somebody stop her. Here she is now in another. It, she almost looks like she dyed her hair more. Wow. Orange. It's really popping. It's this green hider jacket with a yellowy kind of a green tuxedo pant with a purple shoe with a Caravaggio t-shirt and she actually starred in Caravaggio in 1986. Oh. Yes, I am a Tilda Swinton aficionado. Maybe the photographers were like, what's the t-shirt? And she pulled it open. Maybe. I think that's what happened. Okay, one last look. This is a whole kind of smoking jacket, pajama pant, Hugh Hefner situation with a purpley blue pant. Is this all in the same time period? The same time period. Somebody packed her and I love it. And she pulls it off so well. This is fashion. Tillis Winkin can maybe kill someone and I would see her side of it. She would probably have a reason actually if she did do it like Dexter or something. For the good of someone. Let's finish off the Tilda looks with some of her Chanel looks. She wore a few. Here's the first one. This one's hot off the runway. It looks like she's like healing people here. Oh, wow. I thought that picture was she's cute. She's healing that lady. Maybe she's like speaking in Latin and like taking her soul. Oh you think it's like a soul taking situation? Could no. Be. I like the Scaparelli stuff. I don't like her and Chanel. No? Mm -mm. But what about this Chanel with Manolo Blahnik shoes? She's giving us theater. She's giving us drama. David Bowie. Total David Bowie. So the dress is Chanel. She's holding this mask. So the mask is actually by James T. Mary. He's an artist from the UK, but he's been based in Iceland for quite a while. And he's actually a frequent Bjork collaborator. He's made many masks for Bjork. Winnie Harlow wore one of his masks at the Met Gala. That was really cool. This is part of the Iris Van Harpen collaboration. And then, as I mentioned, he's also collaborated with Bjork quite a lot. I mean, he lives in Iceland. I'm sure they're neighbors and always hanging out, but he makes a lot of masks for her. He made two for Tilda, the one I just showed you. And then this one that's kind of, what is this? Like a butterfly? I think it's a lobster. Oh, a lobster. Abstract. With also pearls. So he made this one as well. It's funny too, because I bet all the photographers are like, okay, put, do one without it. Yeah, they're <laughs> like, it, we want to see like, your face. And she's like, no, but I love my mask. So I love this mask too. I think his masks are so beautiful, so intricate. I love what they did to Tilda's Chanel looks here. He also does hand embroideries. They're all sold out on his oh, he's embellishing web shop. Athletic sweatshirts. Yeah, he's taking vintage athletic sweatshirts and then he's embroidering on top of them. 750 pounds. So they're not cheap. Smart idea. They're beautiful hand embroideries. It's a very cool idea, actually. I love it. So that is James T. Mary and his gorgeous masks and embroideries. We have one final segment that we've been looking forward to. We've both been window shopping online. So I just pulled a few things that I thought were cool that I wanted to show you guys that are in my wish list. And you wanted to show us some of the things in your wish list. Yeah, let's just quickly run down these yeah. uh, few items that we are have our eyes on. These Sun Woo boots, I've been eyeing for a while. They come in a bunch of different colors. They have them in the green and they have them in yellow and brown. What's I can show you all the, the colors. So the toes are, one toe is squared, one toe is pointy. They're different toes and they're patent leather and they're made to order. I was thinking of this brown color as Whoa, chic. The glove. Yeah, and then Sunwoo also. So another thing on my wish list was the Sunwoo gloves, which are super cool. They kind of give me Issey Miyake vibes. Yeah. There's even dresses. That's one part of my wish list. And then from Marnie, actually, as we talked about bro hair, I might want to get the mohair socks. And Those are freaking cute. And they come in so many different colors, David. Winter time here. And it's winter time, and I love socks. I also have these crazies. I bought that one pair of Marnies that were shearling last season, the black and white. So I'm holding out for these to see if they're going to go on sale. So they're tan sheepskin pumps. The toes are just dipped in paint. And then the last item that I want to share with you guys is 
is the Frank Gary Louis Vuitton bag. It's my dream bag. I've seen it on what goes around comes around for $20,000. That's not happening. Maybe one day it won't be $20,000 anymore. Or maybe one day I will be able to afford it. Let's see which day comes first. I would prefer the day where I can afford it. Put that out there. Put it out there on the dreams. You know, that's how you manifest. It's the secret. I have some things that I'd like to put into the universe. The Bottega Veneta robe. And so bathrobes, they've been having a moment. Yeah. Right? I've had my eye on several Versace robes. But then I saw this and I thought, oh, wait, look at these colors. I love them. I also love the Versace ones. I mean, they're two very different vibes. I do think the Bottega ones are more you. 4G steel bottle with strap from Givenchy. Ooh, David, we were looking I looking at this. water bottles, remember? And I didn't see this. And I thought, this is a wow. thing of beauty because it's all silver, no gold hardware, which I like. A screw tech cap, the small size. So it has a lot going for it. It's $390. It's kind of expensive. This was $20. It's metal. Okay, Chanel Vintage Bolero for you. This is the one that I said was my grail when we were talking. Oh my God. Shows. It's like $15,000. Ambitious with that, aren't they? But I That's think crazy. Open to best offer. This is definitely on my list. I don't know if they made a size big enough for you. For your arms, the length. It could be cropped. You're very tall. It could be cropped, I know. I would just want it. I had another Chanel thing here. $10,000. Hey, it's not cheap over <laughs> here. 1994 Chanel white logo crop hoodie sweatshirt. I love it, actually. Could you see me in it? See how it's cropped? Oh, God, no, I don't see you in it, David. No, I, I don't at all. I a t-shirt under it. It's Beauty. not right. Ooh, little Nas Gautier. Yes. I love this. Oh, my God, on the real real. This is a collectible. Yeah. I'm surprised surprised to see that the price went down. It actually sold for $666. That's what they were all sold mm -hmm. for. It'll go up in value. Versace Medusa head motif sweatshirt. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love the kind of mock neck turtleneck. Yeah, it's a big neck. It's chic. Well, this is the most affordable thing next to the robe. Everything mm -hmm. else is a freaking bolero. You want a $15,000 know. Chanel bolero? Let's speak these two things into existence. I wish you your Chanel bolero. Thing. I wish you your Frank Gehry yeah. purse. And I hope that you guys enjoyed this show do you like that transition hit us up in the comment section don't Reach be shy out. and we'll see you next time bye the